We are on the eve of Double or Nothing, AEW's third inaugural pay-per-view. We're going to place all of our bets today on this edition of Preview and Predictions of Tap Out Talk. So let's go ahead, let's get started, and let's show our hands. Jumping right in, let's get into our first match. Sting and Darby Allen versus Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, the newly formed tag team. So this will be one of many tag teams and combinated matches this evening. Um, in this match, I actually like Sting in his debut live audience match. Um, since actually going against Seth Rollins back in WWE at his last match in front of a live crowd. Um, I do like his uh, mentorship with Darby Allen, and I believe Darby Allen just lost the TNT uh, championship to Miro, who will be defending that. We'll get to that later here in a second. But right now, with Darby Allen uh, being one of the young up and comers in AEW and being mentored by the man they call Sting, I believe that that force will be too strong, and Sting and Darby Allen will take. The win tonight against Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. So I do want to say Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page have bright futures ahead of them, but I do think they're going to have to gel a little bit more of a tag team in order to take down a Hall of Fame legend and a future main eventer that is Darby Allen and Sting. So my preview and prediction is going to be Sting and Darby Allen get the pinfall tonight, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Stinger possibly get the pinfall himself. Next up, we have Anthony Agogo with The Factory, former professional boxer turned professional wrestler, Anthony Agogo, taking on the American Nightmare, the American Dream, and his patriotic speech, Cody Rhodes with Arn Anderson, the ever faithful Arn Anderson in his corner. Um, I believe this is going to be a pretty straightforward match. I'm interested to see how Anthony Agogo does, and I think Cody and him will have a good style and good clashing together. I do believe that Cody Rhodes does take this victory. You cannot make that passionate of a promo about America and not take the victory here. I'll be highly shocked if a go-go does get a good clean win over Cody. Um, if Cody does somehow get taken out in this match, that would give him time to uh, be off from AEW television and to heal his wounds and to also help out with their uh, soon-to-be um, child, the birth of their child with him and Brandy. So um, I don't want to discount a go-go. I do think as any boxer in these kind of matches, he has a puncher's chance, they call it. I could see the only way this match possibly ending in a go-go's favor is if a go-go just flat out knocks out Cody Rhodes, technical knockout, or just a KO straight to the head. Um, which does knock Cody completely out of AEW for at least three or four months. And that would be a very strong statement by a go-go. So I wouldn't be shocked either way, but I am going to go ahead and say let's do Cody. And I think Cody takes a very solid victory here. Next up, we have the TNT Championship. The newly crowned champion Miro, also known in the WWE days as Rusev. And I do believe that Rusev, this is the beginning of many things. He is the best man and the new champion. It's very too soon to take this title off of him. Uh, we do have Lance Archer on the other side, who is one of the best younger big men in the industry. And he's managed by the uh, Hall of Fame legend, Jake the Snake Roberts, who does an amazing job leading, guiding Lance Archer, and then also doing a lot of the promo work for him. Um, I do believe Archer has a very good future, but this is not his night, and uh, you cannot stop the momentum of Miro and the TNT exploding championship. So I do believe Miro takes the win here uh, and goes past Lance Archer tonight. And next, we have the Young Bucks, the AEW World Champions, versus John Moxley and Eddie Kingston, the newly formed friendship of Moxley and Kingston. Um, if you remember, it was Moxley and Kingston that were in the um, Revolution pay-per-view when the ring exploded in Moxley's title match. And it was uh, Eddie Kingston that came to save Moxley from that quote-unquote disaster. Um, since then, they have formed a bond and a friendship. And uh, this rough duo will have to take on a pretty tall order with the AEW Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks. 
The Young Bucks in Vegas, I see them wearing the flying Elvis suits, coming to the ring, playing into that theme. Um, I could see this match ending with a double super kick to the face to each of Moxley and Kingston. Um, I could see some disarray in Moxley and Kingston. I don't see them as a true tag team uh, together, so I don't think they actually get the tag team championships tonight. I am taking the Young Bucks, and my bet is placed on them walking out with the titles. Next up, we have the AEW World Women's Championship. Hikuro Shida versus Dr. Brick Baker, DMD, with Rebel, not Reba. Um, I believe, first of all, I want to say Hikuro Shida has done a phenomenal job revitalizing this women's championship from obscurity. Um, they started out this title very wrong, I believe. And then as the, the pandemic, they kind of put this on Hikuro Shida for the last year, and she's done a really good job making this title relevant again. But let's be honest, Britt Baker is the face of AEW Women's Wrestling. She just is coming off an amazing coming out match against, um, she basically had this amazing match where she was bloodied up, and Tony Khan basically gave her such high praise in this match. Uh, that, to me, marks the pinnacle of her performance and her ability to rise above and show that grit and toughness, almost like Becky Lynch did when she had that bloody nose in the uh, SmackDown invasion a few years ago. So I do believe Dr. Britt Baker puts on that lockjaw onto Sheeta and becomes the new face of the women's division in AEW. Next up, we have Hangman versus The Machine. Hangman Adam Page versus Brian Cage. Um, I believe from Team Taz. So, Brian Cage is the feature wrestler in Team Taz, managed by Taz himself. Uh, there's been some dissension among them a little bit. You can see a little bit of that in weeks. And this match, I could see going either way. I think this will be a great match. I'm a huge Brian Cage fan. I do like his work. I love the machine. I think he is their version of a Brock Lesnar. That might be a very high expectations for him, but I think he is a future main eventer in AEW. However, something tells me tonight that this is not Brian Cage's night. And Adam Page is a AEW original, and he's kind of their own homegrown branded guy. Um, even though I like Brian Cage, and I would personally want Brian Cage to win this match, and I'll be cheering for that, I can't go past Hangman Adam Page, and he needs a win. And I think he needs to start climbing back up to that title to let him take on Kenny Omega eventually. So I am going to go with Hangman Adam Page in the win. We also have the Casino Battle Royale. So every year at Double or Nothing, this match is in play where it is the winner of this Battle Royale. There are 20 participants and one Joker wild card, and it's always a surprise. So this uh, year, of course, and every year, they get a main event AEW championship title match. So that's something that we're going to look forward to in this. And we have 20, a lot of the participants already released. So if you see here on this graphic, we have Christian Cage, Matt Seidel, Powerhouse Hobbs, Matt Hardy, Isaiah Cassidy, Mark Quinn, Evil Uno, 10, Colt Cabana, Jungle Boy, Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr., Max Caster, Anthony Bowens, QT Marshall, Nick Camarodo, Dustin Rhodes, Lee Johnson, Penta El Cerro Miro, The Blade, and there is a mystery entrant in there. Uh, we could see The Big Show in this as well. We could see, I could see a rumbling of a surprise entrant, maybe somebody from New Japan Pro Wrestling. That would be a huge slap in the face to WWE since they're trying to have an exclusive partnership with New Japan Pro Wrestling. So if I'm AEW and Tony Khan, I try to call up my friends at New Japan and sneak somebody into this match just to kind of, you know, give the, the finger a little bit to WWE for trying to poach my partnerships. Um, also, you know, it's not out of heard of to see possibly the debut of Andrade Cien Almas, who was released from WWE recently. Um, and has been wrestling down in Mexico, but I could see him being a part of this. So there's a lot of options here you could go with. Um, for the winner of this match, though, I'm going to go with Christian Cage. I feel like he came in about a month ago to AEW, and he's worked his way up, and he's you know he needs a reason to have a title shot 
and I could see him taking on Adam Page in the future, or excuse me, not Adam Page, uh, Kenny Omega in the future. So I do see Christian Cage taking this tonight outside anything crazy happening in our Battle Royale. We have next our second ever Stadium Stampede match. Exactly one year ago, we had the first one. Uh, this is a match that takes place in the Jacksonville Jaguars football stadium. And it essentially is a stadium match that can go anywhere and no real rules to it except for major pinfalls. So what we look at, uh, this is brand warfare. And this is gang warfare here. So this is the inner circle versus the pinnacle. If you remember a few months ago, it was uh, MJF, Maxwell J. Friedman, who infiltrated the inner circle and started to turn them against each other and then eventually did turn against them once he created his own group which was called the pinnacle which is the pinnacle of performance i did a whole piece on that the inner circle actually lost to them at last month's cage match blood and guts pay-per-view so i do see uh there is a stipulation on this match too that if the inner circle loses they will have to disband and break apart i don't see that happening so I am going to say the inner circle gets their revenge tonight in stadium stampede matches and they go over on the pinnacle. It doesn't necessarily ruin the pinnacle and they're a very young up and coming group, but I do see the inner circle getting some payback tonight. And in our final main event, the Kenny, the collector Omega, the AEW world champion and the TNA champion. Um, I do see Kenny Omega, of course, defending his AEW world title tonight. And I see him staying champion by the end of the night. His opponents are a triple threat match against Orange Cassidy and Pac. Uh, Pac, the former Neville in WWE. But I see um, Orange Cassidy and Pac. They had a match to determine who the number one contender would be. It ended up uh, being a no contest. And so instead of giving Kenny Omega the night off tonight... They opted to have a triple threat match with all competitors. Uh, there will be the fan favorite, Orange Cassidy, getting some good bumps here. And um, I'm glad to see Pac actually have something relevant in AEW and the fact that he's in a main event match that gives him a good headline you know, and a chance to shine his star a little bit. But at the end of the day, you're not taking that belt off of Kenny o the Collector anytime soon. Kenny Omega will walk out of AEW Double or nothing tonight as your AEW world champion. The thing to watch here, guys, is there could be surprises tonight. We don't know who, if another one of those uh, bag of tricks, if those free agents is going to debut. I like to think back to the very first double or nothing. And this is like their inaugural WrestleMania pay-per-view, right? So double or nothing. I think back when that was the debut of John Moxley, Dean Ambrose coming over from the WWE, and John Moxley invaded and had a beautiful DDT right on a big stack of casino coins. And so I think back to that and I say that double or nothing is that pay-per-view where something big should happen in a main event. And so I would look for Kenny Omega's next challenger to possibly show up in this main event in some format, or we get some kind of major surprise throughout the show of somebody that has decided to become elite and sign with AEW. So let's uh, keep our eyes on that tonight. That's always intriguing to watch pay-per-views to kind of see what's going to happen and what surprises are in store. So that is all the preview and predictions I have for tonight. I wanted to make this quick. I wanted to make this easy so you know what's going on and you get my thoughts and that way you'll get to form some of yours. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Let's get ready for Double or Nothing. And after that, we're going to call it Game Over. This has been Tap Out Talk. But you can't stay here.